Hey guys, I'm Stephanie and this is Steph Stove and today we are making salted caramel cracker bites. These are perfect for snacking when you're, when you're watching all those wonderful Christmas movies or perfect for gift giving as well. They're super easy to make and oh so delicious. So let's get ready and let me show you how to make these wonderful salted caramel cracker bites. Let's go. To get our salted caramel cracker bites started, I've got just a regular size cookie sheet here. And before we do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line this with parchment, parchment paper. Now, I am gonna go over a little bit on both sides, so if you notice, it'll be about an inch on both sides, as well as the edges, because I don't want anything to um, overflow as we're cooking. And to this, we're gonna add one package. This is a nine ounce package of oyster crackers, or some people call them soup crackers. These are little bitty round crackers, kind of like a saltine. They just look quite a saltine. And if you've never seen them, this is what they look like. So we are gonna do the entire package. We'll lay those out. Try your best when you put them out to kind of do these and somewhat of an even layer. So you do want them spread out very well. Now, if there's some that's overlapping, that's not so bad, but we do want them as even as possible. And like I said, in a regular size baking dish, you'll see most of these will even out. You may have just a few that are over each other, but that'll be okay, all right? Now that we've got that going, I've got a medium sized pot right over here to the side. And I'm gonna move you over and we're gonna move over to the next part. All right, as we're moved over to this side, I do have my pot. And to this, we are gonna add two sticks or one cup of butter. Now I do like to use salted butter if um, you think this could be a little too salty and you would prefer to use unsalted butter, that's fine. But I actually like the extra salt in it. So generally I use salted butter. All right, so we get one stick down out of there. Get our other stick added to the pot. And my butter is extremely cold because I'm not sure about where you are, but where I am in South Georgia, we've actually had a really cold snap. So it is very cold for us here. We've had lows in the 30s, highs in the kind of mid to low 50s. So it's very cold for us. Not a lot of what we, our normal temperature. So I'm gonna put this over medium high heat, let our butter completely melt, and then we'll add our next steps. All right, our butter has completely melted. So you can see it's nice and kind of getting ready to boil, and that's about the state that we want. And at this point, we're gonna add together, and I have one cup of brown sugar that I had packed, which means it was tightly in the measure when I measured it. So we're gonna add the brown sugar to it. And then we're gonna add some cinnamon. The cinnamon we're gonna add is not a lot of cinnamon, just a little bit. It's gonna be half of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. My cinnamon measure down. Apologize, I'm right in front of you. This cinnamon container, mine is almost out. So it's about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we have to have a little bit more flavoring. So to this, we're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla, nicely flavored. Sorry, I know that might be a little loud, just a little habit I have. Reached over you, I apologize. And now we are gonna bring this back and kind of get this to boil. This is gonna go for about, um, I'd say two to three minutes. What our goal is here is to be sure that our sugars is completely dissolved and that our mixture becomes thickened. So it will kind of thicken in just a couple minutes. 
Christmas. Ooh, smells so good. And you're going to have to be stirring constantly during this process because if not, you definitely don't want anything to burn. Let's see our um, brown sugar is melting nicely, kind of blending with the butter. See the butter still separated just a little bit, so we need to continue to stir. If you want to do a whisk for this, it's fine as well. Look at that pretty color. Isn't that just beautiful? It's a pretty caramelish color. I'm trying to watch my time during here because again, we want about one to two minutes and you will start seeing that it's getting thicker. That's exactly what we want. We want a thick, caramelish consistency. Almost, almost there. Got a nice bowl, just continue to stir. And you can tell that it's thickening. It's getting kind of a light brown color as the air is incorporating into it. It's getting much lighter than what it originally was. So we know we're almost there. If it's still real dark, you know, you hadn't quite meet, met that threshold. I think I've got about another 30 seconds or so. And again, you will stir kind of vigorously at this point because it can very easily go from perfect to burn. So again, be very, very careful. my two minute mark and it looks really really good so I'm just going to kind of lift the eye up for, or the um, pot up for just a minute while it's cooling and I'm just stirring just to be sure that everything is incorporated all right now as I'm doing this I'm going to move over to my cracker mixture here which my cracker mixture is, remember, just our oyster crackers, which are like little tiny saltine crackers. So I'm going to very carefully and be very, very careful when you do this because this is extremely hot. I'd say like lava hot. So we are gonna pour this over our crackers. Some of y'all watching it, like, ooh, ooh, that over those saltine crackers. Yes, this little baby saltine crackers. And I call them little saltine crackers, but they're not really salty as saltines, but similar consistency. Sody crackers is what my grandma used to call them. Little sody crackers. All right, let me set this to the side. Now, very carefully, you want to come in and incorporate, kind of blend this to be sure that all of the crackers are evenly coated. So just very carefully with the spatula, do not do it with your hand. Do not touch this. Again, this is extremely hot and you will burn yourself. So we're just going to work this around until all of our crackers we can visibly see that are covered in this caramel goodness. Ooh, I bet some of y'all are looking and going, yes, I'm ready to snack on it now. It's good. So easy, such a great Christmas gift to give someone. Because how many of us don't like just snacking on kind of sweet things when we're watching a movie? Well, this is the best of both worlds. This is gonna be a little sweet and salty. Super good. Got some more of that caramel kind of sauce in the center. Kind of move some of the crackers around. Got everybody coated. Just keep 
keep doing this until you notice that all of them are coated. Just kind of take your time, don't go super fast with it. It's all good. And these are going to be good. Ooh, they're going to be good. I know when my husband gets home, he's going, oh, yes, yes. He's like my number one taster. He doesn't like to always do it on camera, but boy, he does, <laughs> he does enjoy everything I cook. He usually comes in and says, oh, it smells good, it smells good, it smells good. What you cooking? I don't know about most of y'all, I just like cooking. I like the process of doing it, just kind of, I guess it's my way of being creative. I'm not an artsy person, but I guess I create things with my cooking. That would be my art. I have more caramel hill here, this one, moving around. All right. I'm just going to get some of these down here. Again, you want to be sure after you um, feel like that they're all coated, kind of press them back, that little lip there, so you have an even coating. Now, if you've watched me in the past, you know I'm a big fan of silicone baking mats. However, I do think in this process, the parchment paper is your best method because it will be sticky, and when you're finished, you want to be able to throw it away. You don't want to take the time of messing with washing the mat. The mat. Alright, so that looks good. Now, we're not quite finished yet. So at this point, I do have a teaspoon of salt, and this is just plain salt. And you're going to kind of go up high and sprinkle the salt. Because I said it's salted caramel. All over. Now, you could use sea salt if you wanted larger chunks. I think actually for this application, the finer grain, more table salt is the best choice. And that way you'll get a little bit of the sweet and salty. And again, you want to do this from high up, higher. So you get a more even distribution of the salt. So I have most of it. I'll put the rest of it in. all off my hands like that. All right, so I'm going to kind of push this around with my tongs. Now, we're not quite finished with it yet. At this point, we've got our oven preheated to 350 degrees. We're going to put this in our oven at 350 degrees, and it's going to bake for about seven to nine minutes. And I say seven to nine. You're going to need to watch it so that the caramel does not burn. And then we're going to take it out and look at it and go to our next step. So let's get this in the oven. Right, let's put it in the oven. 350 degrees. Get it back in here. We'll start checking it in seven minutes. All right, our timer's going off and it's been seven minutes. Ooh, look at our that goes. Don't they look good? I wish you could smell them. You can smell the vanilla and the cinnamon. Look how toasty they are. See, they're still a little loose, and that's what they're supposed to be. Because if you see, they'll shift like this. So we're going to set these down. If you don't have a chopping block, just put these on a wire rack. I'm gonna bring you a little closer so you can see them. Oh my goodness, do I wish that you could smell this. Oh, do I wish I could pass it on to you? You'll just have to take my word for it until you make it. Kind of always reminds me of like when you go through the mall at Christmas time and there's these places that are making like these um, roasted nuts and stuff. Oh, that kind of good smell. Just amazing. Love it. So this has to sit in complete, well, not completely cool, but you will cool it for about five minutes. We're going to let it sit here untouched about five minutes. We'll be right back. All right, it's been five minutes that um, our salted caramel cracker bites have been cooling. 
So at this point, you're gonna need your pot holders. And I'm going to very carefully hold one side and I'm gonna take these off. Separate this from the bacon pan because the pan is still hot. And I don't want it to continue to cook. I want these to cool. And so you can just lay those there and it's okay if that falls. So we just want these to lay and continue to cool. We're gonna give these about 10 more minutes for them to completely cool. And then we're gonna give them a good taste. All right guys, our timer has gone off. So these have been completely or almost completely cool. And it's been 10 additional minutes. So at this point, you can go in with just some little tongs or you can just pick up the parchment paper and kind of pull these apart. They may still be just a little damp. So you want to kind of give them a little shuffle. So if you've got something like this, you can just kind of shake them together. So that way if there's any excess um, caramel that's around here on the side, you'll see that they're all together. I'm going to push these around. Get these over here onto a plate. Just pull these up so you can see them. Look at that. So again, you want to loosen these up. So you can see. So this is a good thing about the part that we can get rid of this in a little while. But you will have some that will all stick together like that one. And that's okay. You just have a bigger bite. Now if you want to break them all up in individual bites, that's fine too. But I'm going to go in here to taste and I'm going to get this one that has several in it. Look at that. So you'll have a little praline um, coating on those. Mm. Ooh, ooh, it is soft and mm. buttery. It's a little bit of salt. Mmm. Delish. Perfect. Perfect, perfect for a Hallmark movie. Or, like my husband would be doing, snack for football. Mmm, just delicious. We do want to kind of stir these so that they will break apart so you can have little individual bites. Because that's what your goal is, let these cool completely and separate. Keep these in an airtight container or munch and enjoy them all in just one setting. You easily could. Mmm, delicious. So remember, I'm Stephanie, this is Steph Stove. Give us a thumbs up, click that subscribe button for more great content like this. So remember, Steph Stove, we're making memories one dish at a time. Thanks for watching, enjoy.